if you win J4, you pretty much I'm not saying the championship of the Hmong football league, but that's pretty much the the cream of the crop right there though. Jay was trying to give me the update of like, yeah, it's gonna be hundred thousand people out there. I'm like, okay, I mean, I I played in front of eighty thousand people. It don't really make sense to, but I mean, it doesn't really bat me any any eyes or whatever. But when I came around that corner, I saw that line to get in J4. I was like, oh no, this is this is something totally different right here. Once again, shout out to Coach James and buy for getting those pre-sale tickets because standing in that line <laughs> this year was oh man yeah whoever do, whoever in charge of those uh j4 uh pre-sale tickets man y'all y'all doing god's work <laughs>
it's a abundance of things um you have family you have um tradition uh you have brotherhood um you have very responsible young men for me personally um i didn't know anything about Hmong. Um, I mean, I've, I've read them in books about, about the culture, but as of interacting with a, a Hmong individual, never happened in Miami, Florida. So, yeah, down in South Florida, you don't get a lot of, um, it, it's a melting pot, but it's more so of the Caribbean lifestyle instead of the um, Asian um, Pacific Islanders. So, um, introduced to James when I was in, uh, as ASM and he um brought up you know coaching and everything like that and witness and what 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 this means to him and to come on out just to see if i like it or not and just to be involved with a bunch of um individuals who are trying to get better that's that's the main goal of, of of being a person and willing to help other people but witness itself um, just building a brotherhood, giving back to the, uh, not just the Hmong community, but just the community period, um, and getting the youth to understand it's bigger than themselves. So um, it, it's it's an abundance of things, as a, once again, tradition, and, uh, and also mainly having fun with the people that you've probably never been around before, and y'all have those common grounds. Uh, it, it, it might just be football in the beginning and you realize, oh, this person like fish and you go fishing with this person. You got a, a family member for the rest of your life. So just those small little attributes that y'all end up bonding together and y'all end up being lifelong friends. Hey guys, listen up, all right? Open your ears right now, all right? Hey, I was gonna share this whether we won or not in that first game or not, right? All right, Coach James asked me yesterday how I feel about coming here today, right? Hey, I'd say this is the most calm in 15 years that I ever came to this tournament, all right? Because I believe that something special was gonna happen, all right? I've been feeling that way for two weeks, and I hope you guys do too, all right? So whether we would've won and I gave this speech or not, it doesn't matter, right? That's something special was gonna happen. I told James that whether it happened or not, we're gonna scream it through. You guys hear that? All right? right? Hey, that's just how life is, all right? All right, all right. Sometimes, all right, it turns out how we want it. Sometimes it doesn't. But I wouldn't change anything. All right. But we got to get better. You guys understand that? We got to get better. We talked about climate and culture. We got to get better. 
all right? Hey, it's not my job, I'm gonna talk to the defense, all right? All right, we're a bend but don't break, all right? But for goodness sake, all right, we gotta set some kind of culture and attitude out there. You quit playing and watching football, all right? I'm sick of it. Not that you guys aren't making plays or you guys aren't in the right position, but we're just out there playing, all right? Set some kind of culture, some kind of tone of who you guys are. Play witness football, all right? Find the identity. We're still missing that. They crazy. My football journey, it's a long journey, probably not as long as Coach James, but um, it started off back in Carroll City, Miami, Florida. Uh, I was about six when I first started playing football. Um, uh, you wouldn't think of it now with my physique, but I, my very first position was a center. I played center and I was terrible. Like I didn't want to play it. I didn't like playing it. I just wanted to be home or be around my friends. Like I, I freaking hated football at that time. And uh, uh, Coach Henry, uh, one of my mom's good best friends when she lived in Miami, you know, wanted me to get out of my comfort zone, especially not having a, a father figure in the house, you know, trying to get responsibilities and a structure, you know. But I remember like never getting off the field. Like literally I played center, nose guard, I was the kicker, and then I was the front line of kick return, I was the punter. Like I played a lot of positions and I was not even good. So, but that built like that responsibility of like, a, a you're not good, but we're gonna develop you into more than what you are <laughs> when you first started, but I freaking hated it. Like, hated it, hated it, hated it. Oh, that's the daughter. Oh. Hey. hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey. hey. It's, oh, don't make that noise. Don't make that noise. Say, what's up? Okay, put your hand down. You're not asking questions. <laughs> okay. Let me get your beer. You got to spit up. Let me get your bib. No? Well, let me get it just in case. The outfit is too nice for you to spit up on. Everybody that go to my high school kind of go D1, but like we had a squad that year. Like we had Antonio Brown, we had Xavier Rose, we had Sterling. Um, we had well, that JV, he ain't make varsity. We had Duke Johnson, uh, Sean Ferguson. Um, it was Dwight Fluka Bear, like all the people like went in NFL, like they was top notch. And I ended up getting a couple scholarships. I think like, the first scholarship I ever had was to Rutgers and Utah State and some of the Power Fives, not all the Power Fives. And I ended up going to Central Michigan just because they, there was one that would kind of more so want me more, like uh, <laughs> feed my ego, if you would say. I went there for, I want to say two months, and then I ended up leaving there because my mom passed. So I went back home to help out my grandmother in the following year. So I got gray shirt and the following year I went back. Did one more year there and so I ended up transferring. I went down to a JUCO and it's funny now, it's called Last Chance U and like I didn't think of it like that, but like I just wanted to play football. Met a, met a bunch of people who was great individuals that ended up going to the league also, but um, that, that Juco life is it's a different life though. Like you have to be mentally and physically ready for that Juco life because you don't get a lot of resources. The facilities aren't that good. It's it's it's, it's literally how bad that you want to play football to um, higher education or, or get a, get another shot pretty much. Got recruited by a lot of schools. They wanted me to go more so West Coast, but I was trying to be close to family. Uh, so I like canceled out all my Oregon States and Utah, Utah State. I like, nah, I'm not going West Coast. I'm trying to go back close to home. So I was waiting on, I had a scholarship from Memphis. And right before I signed to Memphis, the head coach got fired. So I lost that scholarship. So I ended up going to Murray State, which in the long scheme of things, Murray State was the best school for me. I made lifelong friends uh, with Murray State. Uh, had a pretty decent career, had a couple hundred yard gains, I think a handful of 200 yard gains at, at receiver. Didn't play really much running back there. Um, did kick return, uh, not really punt return. I had one instant with a punt return. Um, I tripped over my shoestrings and I ain't paid punt return ever again. Uh, but after I graduated, I had a couple opportunities to, oh, I actually did try out for um, Seattle and uh, Houston. 
Um, they came up to the combine uh, after I fractured my ribs, had a heal, and it was it was a good experience. Um, never really went further than that. Just to you know, shot my shot. If I may, I may. If I don't, I don't. But um, it was it was a fun career, and I realized like how much I enjoy coaching a football instead of playing football. I mean, I, I still enjoy to play as of like for fun, but to put your body in and uh, them injuries, man, I saw them injuries are real. But um, I just enjoy coaching uh, uh, later in life than I um, did when I played and what really happened was my senior year, I, senior year in college, when I fractured my ribs, uh, I'm gonna say like three, four through the season, um, you, 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 you have two paths you can take. You, you have the, uh, I'm mad at myself, this is my shot to make it to the league, or you can double down and help those coming up to build the culture of the next, um, of, of the future for that, that school. And I end up going back, helping the freshmen and sophomores, you know, getting their playbooks down and working on releases and um, film study and stuff like that. So, and that's what I really like enjoy coaching. It's funny how I started as of like not knowing anything about football, I hated football, so like love coaching. <laughs> Coach James, uh, he approached me. Well, we worked worked together. What's up, Coach James? Uh, we worked together, um, and you know, James loved football. I love football. We could talk about football all day long. And if Coach James, you watching this now, I know you're gonna be like. Our coworkers, they hate when we talk about football because they know it's all we're going to talk about all day. And um, he approached me saying, like, oh, you know, I, I, I coach Witness. Um, you should come out and play. I was like, I, I haven't played football since I graduated from Murray State, which was at that time, I graduated in 2012. So it was seven, eight years ago. 
I was like, really played? I was like, nah, I can coach. You know, <laughs> I, I, I have a lot of knowledge to give out. Uh, and depending on how I'm feeling, you know, I feel in when I can. But as of playing full time, nah, I, I, I can't. I don't think I can physically do it. And he was like, well, just come out, meet the guys, um, to see, see, see what they got. If, if you have any knowledge to give them, we'll love to have you. I'm like, I would love to do that because I've been looking for that for a long time also. And that's, that's another way also of just kind of putting rules down in Minneapolis because um, I, I never thought of this as like a forever place. But it's, it's, it's cool just to have brotherhood. I would feel terrible if... I did not take this opportunity because there's a lot of great people in there that's wanting to get better at a sport that I'm not sure what their, um, what their I guess, levels are. And then meeting the new guys from this year, just the, the revolving door of great players that come through, great kids who's trying to learn, uh, you can't beat it. So uh, just watching the development of the, 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 these players. Uh, means a lot. So I, I don't see myself going anywhere anytime soon. Um, depending on how this little girl here goes, I'm, I'm, I may try to participate a little bit more. Um, not as of like playing anything like that. Maybe fill in when other people can't play. But as of like starting wise, because I, I love watching the development of kids. Because my time is over with. Like this is for y'all. Am I right, girl? That's it.
right? That little short moment, right? Because that thing will always change, right? It's the whole process that we're doing here. The preparation, right? The relationship that we're doing. That's what a team is, all right? And I hope you guys remember that, right? Regardless of the outcome, the results, all right? Because those things only last for a simple moment, all right? Right? But the whole process, the preparation, that's what we're going to last, that's what we take. That's what me and James built this brand upon. That's the reason why we're still friends after almost 30 years. Alright? And a lot of us here too. Alright? Definitely at the end. I'm definitely going to be here until the very end. Uh, even if I wanted to, uh, you know, take a little break, I'm going to see Coach James at work every day. We're going to talk about football, right. how to get y'all boys better. That, that must be investing y'all. Even we at work, we talk about practice and plays and schemes and all the other good stuff. Y'all sleeping. Coaches really never sleep, you know what I mean? Let's go! Win this on three! One, two, three! Win it! So when it comes down to the Hmong football life and like the culture of Hmong football, all of this was new for me. James introduced me, introduced it to me. Um, as of the Hmong um, football part of it, the they're super competitive. I, I, I will hands down say that they they fight to the very end, um, and I was surprised of like the vertical ability of the monks like they they can really really jump they have great abilities and agility um and speeds things like that i mean it, it's of course again like not like your nfl caliber players but they still can compete to win and they still understand like oh i'm better than this person let's just beat this person to win the game so like those little nuances are pretty pretty cool to know that it's, it's it's not just a one culture type sport and um but the culture um i've learned about mon sausage i love mon sausage i love purple rice i love sticky rice i love uh it's, it's not mong ribs i don't know what the ribs call it's, it's like whatever ribs that james make though freaking delicious uh yeah, it's the Hmong food is just immaculate. Like I, whenever Hmong started to come out, like whenever we have like Memorial Day weekend or football games or anytime the food truck is there, I'm getting Hmong sausage and sticky rice. Like it's a must. And the fried pork belly, like it's a must with the with the spicy chili sauce. Ah, uh, girl, when you start, when you old enough, girl, you old enough. Yeah.